Well, there was quite a lot of kids in Andover Way, um, the Bull, Bull family across the road from where we were. Um, old Darren Wilgamaz used to live next door. He was just a little kid in nappies back when I first got there. Always remember him running around the street, nappy full of um, you know what, dragging around, <laughs> yeah, dragging around down his knees. Uh, he was quite a uh, interesting little fellow then too. He just used to get up a fair bit of mischief. But um, he and my little brother and and just about all the kids in the street, either running around, chasing each other, playing a bit of cricket. I used to play French cricket a lot in our backyard. I sort of taught a few of the kids how to catch. So I was being one of the old, older boys at the time. But it was um, yeah, it's. it's just used to just run around and just get up to anything. There was not much on TV and no um, computer games. Was there any air conditioners around then? No, we had shutters. My actually, my mum and dad had one in their room, but we weren't allowed in there. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you keep cool as a as a Roeburn uh, youth back in the day? It was um, it was just something you just got used to, mind you. It, it was probably more consistent the, the weather back then. It was forty forty two every day in the summertime, and it didn't get any hotter and unless there was a cyclone or something around it was when it got cool so john evans your father was the local butcher and you and the family used to help him out on the weekends tell me more yeah well um used to i used to go and cut all his uh plony and ham and silver side and all that sort of stuff ready for the for the coming opening of the shop on the on the on the monday um but then when i was at school a couple of kids started um bag out his sausages, they reckon they were full of sawdust. <laughs> so um, I ended up mincing up all the meat, and I know that for a fact that there was no sawdust in it, so I used to have to try and sort the kids out at school, otherwise I wouldn't eat his sausages. And his <laughs> sausage sales started to plummet, but I think I had a hand in getting those back up. <laughs> Good on you. And uh, did your uh, family sell uh, kangaroo tails and some of the, the muller meat that the locals like? No, actually, but he did start selling some mulloway. We used to catch some mulloway underneath the um, ore wharf. Back in the day, it's frowned upon now these days, but um, when the uh, health inspector heard that there was some fish getting sold out of the shop, it sort of shut Dad down so he couldn't sell any more Mulloway. <laughs> so your uh, father's butcher shop was located right across the road from the Victoria Hotel. I'm sure you would have seen a lot of interesting things back in the day. Yeah, she was a pretty wild place back then. Um, we used to get off the bus. Quite often um, we'd, we'd get off the bus and grab some fishing gear out of Dad's Cortina and go down the river and, and try and catch some little fish and stuff. And um, uh, depending on whether there was some action going on at the Vic, sometimes we'd stop and watch for a bit because it used to get quite feisty. If it was fairly quiet, we'd just head straight down to the river and um, go fishing. And was that before the Harding Dam? Yeah, it was oh, a lot. Oh, tell me what it was like. It was good. I mean, it still would flow, it would, it would, it wouldn't, but there was always water in it. I remember when I first came up here as a um, little tacker, about eight, nine. In the early 70s, I used to wander around down the river all the time because there was no telly back then, so he had nothing to do. And um, being near to town, I didn't have, really have any friends then, so I used to wander around. But I remember the river running, not trickling through all the time there, and it, was, it wasn't really summertime, so it was probably more, more now. So it's more consistent with the water. But yeah. um, you can catch a mangrove jack in that river, I found out. Um, just I've, I uh, caught one of these little fish one day and put a hook through his back and threw him out as live bait and then uh, got snapped off. So the next day I went down with my fishing rod and a few muleys and started bait casting in the pool just behind here, actually. And um, yeah, went home with three or four mangrove jack. My old man couldn't believe it. Wow. Yeah. And you would have been an exci- excited as well. Oh, I sure was. You're listening to Ghana Radio, if you've just tuned in. My guest is John Evans. We're reminiscing about the good old days of uh, himself growing up in Roburn and Wickham. Uh, this weekend, the Wickham community is celebrating 50 years. So uh, you started your apprenticeship at Rio Tinto when you were 15 years old. Tell me about your first day. First day was a bit, a bit funny. You sort of get to work and they, I think there were 16 apprentices started that day. And, of course got your inductions and stuff, very similar to, to, to how things are now. But being um, fresh apprentices and uh, impressionable age, the general manager come down and give us a bit of a spiel about how the operation worked and and um, what our targets were for the year, which might blow you away. We were looking for 90 million tonne in a year back then. It's pretty much done in a month these days, I think. Wow. And so um, maybe even quicker than that. But, um, yeah, Mike Spratty's name was. He had a bit of a funny eye, so he wasn't. They didn't always track the same direction. So uh, he was uh, 
asking if there was any questions. And when he was looking at people, nobody knew who he was looking at. So it was <laughs> stony silence and he got very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, did anyone um, answer, just in case? Oh, then the start, everyone started asking questions. <laughs> it just got out of control. It was just nuts. Uh, now, you've, you, uh, you did have a 10-year break from uh, the Pilbara, but how has Wickham developed and grown over the years? What, what changes have you seen? Well, the changes have probably been, I mean, I've been back 20 years now, and there was always talk of um, the hub and all that sort of stuff um, early on in the piece. But um, when I came back, the Wickham Club was still there. It was still open before they knocked it down. Um, met up with an old mate of mine, Phil Stevens, all the older, and um, we went down for a drink. And when we walked into the club, when we'd been away for 10 years, the decor was exactly the same. Nothing had changed. The same red carpet. It was dingy as it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was quite. It's like walking back in time. It was unreal. Wow. <laughs> and now uh, look at it. I mean, with the. Uh uh, the Rambler there, it's yeah, it's a great little community hub. And even when we were down there last night, all the families just walked down, you know, ha- grab a meal, have a feed. It's a great little community. Now, how has the mindset in the mining sector changed? For example, I heard a story that Wickham workers went on strike because of ice cream and cream biscuits. Yep. Uh, there was a few rules. There was a few agreements for the awards and stuff that the unions had ne- negotiated back in the day. But there wasn't... The- the right amount of flavours in the freezer or, or uh, cream biscuits in the, in the Bicky tin. Sometimes uh, they take exception to that, but sometimes they were, I think, looking for reason to take some action just to bolster some other um, ideas they were trying to, or other things they were trying to fight for. But, and, um, well, please say those other things were more than ice cream and cream biscuits. <laughs> Real things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So and of course now these days, in, uh, you know, uh, there's been a spotlight on safety. Like, was like how you deal with safety now? Was it the same when you were 15? Uh, no, I, I think the safety thing's just been a, a, a big education as as we've all sort of evolved. To be honest, um, nobody nobody deliberately does things to hurt themselves or hurt anybody else. But I just don't think. The, um, the planning or the thinking of the things that you were doing at the time, you could really seal the ramifications because, you know, like I said, you sort of learn, learn from things and the industry's just gotten better and better and better and, and the importance of, of an individual's safety and their well-being is the, is the foremost of anything we do out there now. So that's the number one thing. So um, that's, the, that's the change. You know, where you climb up on stuff and you can't do that anymore. You've got to have the right gear so that you, you can't fall, you know, that sort of thing. So yes. Yeah, it's a lot more um, whole process type um, look at that sort of stuff, yeah. And what do you love about the community of Wickham? Oh, well, like you said last night, wandering down, there's a bunch of people there I hadn't met before last night. We were all having a good old joke and a yarn last night. So, um, and, and like yourself, even yes. you, you dragged me into this, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I've, I've been living in Roburn for, this is my coming on to my 17th year now. Um, absolutely love and I, I, you know, I, and I love that. I feel like we're still sort of in the country, and if we want to go to the big smoke, which is like the city of Caratha now, yeah. it's down the road. I'd rather be here, close to Cossack, Wickham, Samson. Okay, now you have also played in the band called Misguided. Tell me about Misguided and and what you've been doing in the Pilbara all these years. Oh, well, we've we've been we were running we ran for about nineteen twenty years. Um, Drew Reed, Ray Bath. Myself, Bob Dershaw from Carrather, um, and we play mostly at the uh, Carrather venues. Um, the Apex Garden Party was a was a regular gig that we did for the, for charity, which was was really good. No other ones probably stick in my mind the most. Um, and got to a point, probably about a year ago, where Bob needed a change, so he left the band, and um, Drew Drew's left. He's since moved on, so me and the drummer are still trying to. Get it, get it happening. So we're in a transitional phase at the moment. So are you looking for a singer? Singer, guitarist. I, <laughs> oh, I, I know one, a singer, guitarist. I'll, se- I'll, I'll send you a, a phone number later on. No worries. Okay, now Joe Carrier will be performing this Saturday to celebrate 50 years of Wickham. Now, is this 50 years of, of uh, since Rio Tinto started? What was? Because I think Wickham has been going a bit longer than 50 years. Oh, no, I think it all happened around the same time. It was sort of built when oh. the construction was on. I mean, my, my the reason my dad got up here was um, when BHP were building Headland. He was on that construction camp. He was here for this construction camp. 
it was 60s, 70s, and then uh, and even Dampier. So he was on all the all the camps that when they were building it, different jobs and at different times. But um, so he was a butcher when he was here, and a fellow named Pete Nicholson, because the butcher shop was called Nicholson's Butchery, stayed after it finished and started the shop, and then he dragged my old man into it. So that was um, that's how we ended up getting getting, getting up here. Excellent. Okay, well, Joe Curia is performing. You've requested a Joe Curia song. Why? Hats off to Josh Philpot and the boys, the local fellas. And I just think it was only fitting that um, they can take me out. There you go. <laughs> Love it. He's back no more. One of my faves.